All right. Welcome back for the love of the game. I think we're what issue 15 and we're going to be rocking an OKR teardown for this upcoming sprint here with my man, Kalo. How are we doing, Kev? Hanging we're in? Doing great. Hanging in there, man. Ready to, to dive into vacation next week. So I'm excited to pump this content out. <laughs> I was going to say, says the man who's going to be on a beach in Mexico next week. How are right? you? I'm doing, I'm doing all right. All right. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Um, cool. <laughs> so, so, hard. <laughs> <laughs> so Substack's being a little wonky. So we're just going to use uh, some of the source content that we manage in, in uh, Notion. Um, so... Let's jump in. OKR, objective and key results. Um, and so as like a quick orientation, so we, and I'll zoom out just a bit, but uh, we start with a quick look at the actual OKR and get more definitive there, more granular. And then this one starts with kind of a recap, something that we've touched on in the past, but just components of an effective affiliate. And we're going to use the term affiliate and ambassador synonymously today. Same thing, just like a partnership channel. Just remember ambassadors are typically users. Affiliates or third-party entities like blog, you know, uh, content, stuff like that. Um, so we'll talk about the components there. It's kind of a point of departure. And then we'll get into the key results themselves. So uh, for us, it's about creating and uh, providing relevant assets to support ambassador communication with their network, stuff like social, email, templates, et cetera. So we'll go into the key results themselves and just an approach. Uh, and then we've included some thoughts around, you know, copy and templates and stuff so that folks can be, make this a little more actionable than is typical of content out there in the world. And then we will go on to wrap. That sound all right with you? Sounds like a perfect plan. I love the little tidbits where folks can just copy paste the prompts and just drop them right in the chat GPT. Amen, that is it. Um, cool, so objective, establish partner channel enablement to generate 10 plus trial signups in August. So we've got about uh, 10 or 14 or so ambassadors expressed interest. Uh, we've, we kind of refactored our tooling. We got it rolling with reversion for a commission share, uh, commission scheme or revenue share. And uh, we've got about six folks enrolled in that. And now the thing is, how do we help them get the word out in a way that mm -hmm. is sexy and interesting and cool and brings them pride to be associated with the brand? Um, so that's what we're trying to do. And then ultimately, what's it about? It's about trial signups and then conversions yep. of paid users. So uh, traffic to our website's a vanity metric from our, our ambassadors. Trial signups, for all intents and purposes, is kind of a vanity metric. What we're interested in here is new paid users. Um, but this is how we get there. So in terms of the key results, create and provide relevant assets to support ambassador communication with their networks. As I mentioned, uh, this is going to be, and we'll touch on this, but both creative and copy. So the two components that make up content. And then create and provide collateral and talk tracks to enable ambassadors to position and differentiate portfolio companies. So this is going to be more about cool. You're having a conversation with somebody and they're like, why should I use this thing? And you're like, yep. here's why. Well, what, is this firm better than competitor A, B, or C? Why? Yes, here you go. And just enabling them, uh, just a pure play kind of enablement. Uh, tactic there. And then lastly, changing gears a little bit to the affiliates front. So we want to secure 3x affiliates and then uh, prioritize via performance for comparable vendors. And we actually moved in the direction of uh, an objective scorecard. So we'll dig into that. Kev, remind awesome. me, what are some components of an effective affiliate program? Don't cheat. Uh, dude, well, first of all, you're going to have to kind of figure out how do we even compensate these folks, right? What is What do they want? Is it to provide the people that they're referring with a discount or would they themselves want to be receiving some type of commission, some kind of monetary incentive? So you got to figure out how do we incentivize these affiliates and make it competitive compared to the other potential vendors they can go be affiliates with? Then you kind of need somebody to stay in touch with them. How can we serve you better? What, are you, what is your feedback about our program and our services? How do we enable you better to go out and shout about who we are from the mountaintops, right? On top of that, you also need, like we just talked about, enablement material. How can they communicate about who we are and what we do if we're not even enabling them to have these conversations? And you got to track it. The, yeah. Across all of that, there needs to be some kind of technology where you can just see what's happening day to day and then just report on, are these activities driving the outcomes we want? So those are a few key points. Those are on the on the money. Uh, so on the or on the we so this one kind of starts with competitive commission rates, but I think we could be extract or abstract a little bit out beyond that. And it's like incentives, mm -hmm. and it's usually like yeah. hook up your people, make money, 
or yep. be cool. <laughs> like, you know, simply put, it's like, just, you know, be cool by association. Um, yep. Terms and conditions, obviously, reliable tracking system, you nailed that one. And then marketing support, which is what we're going to really dive into. And then ongoing communication, because that's, I think one of the big pitfalls, and we talk about that here, especially with like partners, like OG kind of enterprise SaaS, where it's like, hey, we sell an HR tech, we're going to partner up with insurance brokers and CPAs and business bankers, and you light up 50 partnerships and you never talk to them again and you get no results. <laughs> and it's like, yep. you should have just picked one really dope CPA or one dope broker and just got a really nice kind of reciprocal lead flow going with them and then stack those relationships, just like everything stacking yeah. at the unit level is how that stuff kind of compounds over time but buy them a coffee figures out figure out what they need and how to move that needle for both of you right <laughs> yeah and then focus and then have a game plan right where it's like hey this is these are our goals this is our you know uh, some type of consistent check-in where we're gonna yep. in, in, the, in that context with like sales led growth it's like hey let's review each other's pipelines let's uncover opportunities to make introductions cool which business have you closed recently are they either of those are candidates for uh an intro etc cool how are we pacing towards our goal we said we wanted to try and mm -hmm. generate two or three referrals a month what's that looking like and we close business for each other etc so good channel sales baby that's it. And that's, and it's interesting too, because I think the tendency with go to market is to jump into, and if we're talking about, well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Product led or sales led growth. I think on the sales led side, it's like, let's go outbound. Let's hire SDRs. Let's hire account execs and let's start peppering, peppering society with phone calls and emails. It's like, okay, <laughs> yep. like, have you evaluated or like, have you can like identified that channel in, in uh, I guess, re relevant to or related in, no, what's the word I'm looking for here? I'm a little fatigued with the, with the sickness, but let me see if my words will come. It's all relative, right? So it's like, okay, outbound, you, you've chosen that because why? You think it'll perform relative to partnership channels, relative to X, Y, Z. Um, and so the tendency is usually like, hire a team and go outbound hard as you can, or let's go buy mm -hmm. a shitload of ads and see what we get. And it's like, well, yep. you want to step back and think about the channels that are available in your context, and then think about experiments to test those channels, and then go hard at the one that provides results. or get some feedback from the market and, and have a thesis around where the the first kind of most impactful channels is going to be. So Agreed. anywho, um, all right. So relevant content, I mean, pretty straightforward, right? I mean, it, and this one is usually, and you just want to put yourself in the body of, of an ambassador where, or, and it's just the same for us. If, like, Hey, if I became an ambassador, what would I want to do? Well, I'm going to throw it up on LinkedIn. I'm going to throw it up on Instagram. I might blast my newsletter following. Cool. But then you need some social templates and some email banners and they better be yep. sexy. And there's a creative component, right? Which is the look and feel. And then there's uh, the email templates. And the thing about- There's also there's also the post template. What do I say to my people? I might not be in that moment. Like my brain might not be firing. I don't know what to write, but if you start me off with something, okay, I can maybe tweak that a bit. Totally. And the hope here is don't ask ambassadors to think don't like spoon feed them, handhold them as much as humanly possible, remove all the friction from the process. So to your point, and the thing, creative co templates are a little more tricky because they need to be branded. They need, the messaging needs to be airtight. Good design is invisible and so worth investment versus mm -hmm. the copy. There's way more data on that. And it's a little bit more turnkey where you can be like, Hey, um, and there's vendors out there and chat GPT is great. Like, you know, what are the top 10 performing brand ambassador announcement, LinkedIn posts and scan yep. LinkedIn. Right. Um, and stuff like that. And it's like, Hey, you know, and then you can break apart the components. Right. So here's an example of social template copy, like exciting news. I've teamed up with firm, the game changing software that's transformed the way I manage my industry vertical or business domain. Stay tuned for more details. That's an example of a social. And these, and the thing too, is you have to assume that this like ambassador communication is like a campaign, right? So it's like, it's not a, hey, let's provide one template and it's a set it and forget it. It's like, hey, this is a, there's a life cycle to you as an ambassador. We're gonna, here's mm -hmm. an announcement to your network. Here's a kind of benefit driven thing about why you use this software. Here's something else about, you know, the whatever, right? But you think about it as a life cycle and they, you wanna enable them to reinforce this message over time. Like it's a new beat and kind of their content engine. Exactly. Like in the world of sales, you want to treat this like a nurture pipeline. You have your ambassadors and you constantly need to be peppering them to stay top of mind. Totally. And because that's just attention, you know, that's, it's a, it's a very competitive thing. Attention, it turns out. Um, yep. Cool. And then here, here's some example email templates. And then 
uh, you can kind of extract back, and this is back to kind of the ambassador journey and their life cycle, but you can think about sentiment. So at the beginning, it's like, yo, here's my referral, or I just, I, I'm joining as an ambassador. Cool. Now, hey, here's my referral link. By the way, here's some of the benefits I've experienced. Or by the way, here's a bit of insight into my journey, like a before, mm -hmm. uh, then I use, and this is like kind of hero journey oriented, et cetera. But um, all pretty straightforward. This is just a matter of pure execution and then keeping it as simple as humanly possible. So it's like, where do you house this shit? How do ambassadors find it easy breezy? How do they take it and turnkey it and make it actionable? So you got to centralize all that stuff. Uh, keep it simple, keep it simple, keep it simple. Here's a, and Notion pages are great for that. Yeah. Question for you. And this is also for the audience as well. <clears throat> Was there any kind of uh, logic going into choosing the copy for these three where one has a monetary incentive and the other two is just sharing personal experience? Was there a reason you did that? Yeah, well, so, and it depends too, because that raises like a really kind of sticky topic in uh, ambassadors where it's like, like a lot of consultants have to maintain, um, they have to stay unbiased, right? So said mm -hmm. another way, they can't be exclusive to a vendor. So let's mm -hmm. say I hire you, Kevin, and you come in and you're like, yo, you should totally use HubSpot for your CRM. It's the way to go. And it's like, okay, I paid you for objective, unbiased perspective on the tech stack and then come to find HubSpot's greased you and you're going to make 20% of the revenue. And it's like, huh, was that recommendation in my best interest? Or are you recommending right. that because you're getting paid? So a lot of partners and partner channels have to stay non-exclusive. So they make mm -hmm. recommendations that they believe in their professional view or, the, or in the interest of the client. Um, and then, you know, that's where kind of commercial incentives get a little bit sticky. But, um, and that brings a question where it's like, hey, and in this program, we have kind of two flavors of the dis of the referral link. One is a, is a pass through discount to their users, which is like, hey, a lot of our uh, users host workshops and things like that for their, for their industry for kind of up and comers. So it's like, hey, people are participating in your workshop. You want to give them like a suite of discounts and hookups. Cool. Throw this, throw us on there. They'll get a 20% discount for six months if they sign up. Cool. The other flavor and our users are hustlers. Like most of them have a few income streams. So the yeah. other flavor is you have a following. You're very content driven. You've got X number of YouTube followers. You've got a channel and you are kind of monetizing that network and that following via programs like this. So you're heavily yep. incentivized commercially and, and there's no kind of conflict or interest or any kind of weird non-exclusivity kind of shit. So cool, here's a commission, it's a rev share on the lifetime value, et cetera, however you wanna structure it. Um, so I left it a little bit vague here where it's like, here's my referral link. <laughs> so it's yeah. like, whichever side of the coin you wanna be on, here you go. And just some general orientation around how they can start to think about it. And of course, and as you mentioned, the hope here or the expectation is probably that they're not going to just copy and paste this thing wholesale, right. but they'll, they'll, it's, it, you get them from zero to one because that's where most of the stalling happens. So it's like, Hey, here you go. Here's a kick in the butt. Boom. Gets the, get the wheels turning and, uh, and away they go. No, that's exactly it. But I love the way that you answered because it's really trying to put the person in a position where they seem unbiased and they're providing an objective kind of response. Yeah, totally. And that, I mean, that's the other thing too. It's like, Hey, I guess there's very minimal commitments on our side, you know, like the ask, the real call to action is participate in a free trial. Yeah. So it's like, Hey, give us a, a shot for two weeks. If you hate it, move on. No, yeah. no, yeah, hard feelings. Simple. you know, that's <laughs> it. If you love it, become a subscriber, happy days. Um, okay. So we talked about basically enablement, which is like a help them get the word out help them yep. generate uh, some traffic and some interest. And then we pivot into collateral, which I kind of hate that word. It's like a catch all for sales shit, but you know, like <laughs> substance, give them substance and talk tracks, which is another super salesy term, but uh, you want to basically give them talking points for inevitable discussion. So they get the word out. Hey, okay. Why do you use that firm? You want to mm -hmm. give them an answer for that. Again, we want to strip away the effort, the thinking, all that stuff, and obviously put the re responses on guardrails so that they're on brand and that they're articulating the right message, the right brand promise. Right. So chat GPT, God bless it, right? Here's some prompts. Please provide competitive differentiation and position statement for firm based on the following format. For target audience or ICP that needs pain point, firm is a market category which provides differentiated benefits. And you'll get, you can ask for five flavors of that, et cetera, but from that, you should be able to put together a compelling why us in one mm -hmm. or two sentences. 
And then you want to get a little more granular. So that's kind of the first thing. So, hey, why should I use this group? Well, bang to bang to bang to bang. Okay, cool. Well, what about this versus that? Right. You yep. just kind of think about the conversation trajectory and it's like, okay. And then you go and based on your knowledge of firm, their ideal customer profile and relevant competitors, please provide an example blog post highlighting the top 10 software providers. Cool. Now please rewrite the blog post in a more condensed format organized by the pros and cons of each vendor, right? In bullet form. And obviously these are just kind of flavors of the prompts, but that should get you very close. So now it's like, hey, yeah. ambassadors, here we are. We've got, uh, here's some dope creative and some templates for your social, light it up. Here's some email stuff. If you have an, an email list serve, light it up. When the, if you push the tide out, when the tide comes back in, here's why us. Here's why us versus this competitor, that competitor, and this competitor. And then, then you kind of just see what they need from there, right? Because those yeah. are kind of like the no-brainer table stakes uh, enablement deliverables, if you will. And then from there, it's like, hey, I need a video demo or I need, um, you know, something just to give them a sense of what it looks like. Or, hey, maybe can we do like a, can we onboard some of my referrals as the cohort and we'll do like a workshop? Um, Ooh, I like right? that. You start, yeah, you start to get creative. Um, um, to add to that as well, I was even thinking as we're starting to pinpoint some of these uh, like points of differences and why us, now we're talking FAQs on the homepage and for the live chat as well. Yeah, totally. And you can sit, obviously you can systematize all this content. You can train models on it um, and you're good in a good spot. So that kind of brings us to today uh, with our portfolio company in terms of like early days. Um, so from here, now we're talking about affiliates. So Again, just to to mention this because there's so much, you know, terminology and buzzwords and acronyms in our category and in the world. <laughs> so it, I think it's useful to repeat this. But ambassadors are typically humans, or customers, or users, or whatever, however you want to think about it. Affiliates are business entities that are usually kind of content driven or editorial driven, or they're adjacent. So it's like, hey, you sell an invoicing thing, you should partner up with a proposal thing. And yeah. you guys should be affiliates and, and, and should share and refer. You have a sales reps. software partner with Sandler Sales Training because they're it's, training all the sales reps. And once they, they're they done building their processes and playbooks, they're not going to use your software off of that training. That's it. Exactly. Sandler is the affiliate. <laughs> exactly. And, and the affiliates usually, the, like for ambassadors, like, oh, I've, you know, I've never been an ambassador. What's that like? And it's like, okay, right. like, you know, here you go, here you go. With affiliates, they're like, oh, yeah, this is like our business model at the end of the day and we're totally clear on this um so there's much more precedent and you can kind of get rolling um yeah i you know a way to kind of summarize that if i was to visualize it for everyone listening if you're using like let's say salesforce or hubspot you know how hubspot has those life cycle stages where there's customer and then evangelist that evangelist is your ambassador because the customer is already engaged with you and now you're taking that potential power user and just taking the relationship to another level where they can now go and attract similar potential power users like themselves. That's an totally. ambassador. Or, and, or you could say, if we want to get really heady, that if we're thinking about the bow tie and the buyer journey um, and some of the concepts around like what's at the far end of like, what's the ultimate outcome of a customer? The, does a target evangelist <laughs> is to get them to a, a word of mouth marketer basically. Exactly. Right. So yeah. it's like, uh, you know, you, they learn, they learn about the problem they're having. They look like at the options, awareness. <laughs> they, they choose you, they perceive the brand promise and are activated. Yep. And now they're, and now they're daily users. They've received the brand promise over and over, and it's created a ton of value for their business. Boom. Now they're mm -hmm. into evangelist ambassador, whatever you want to call it space. So ultimately yep. an ambassador is the name of the game, right? Uh, yeah, and that creates exactly. the fly, the flywheel and it doesn't cost you anything. Um, so that's all, yeah, that's a good point. Um, so we thought about um, just like an objective scorecard, right? So like, again, this is a good prompt for chat GPT and it's like, hey, how should we evaluate ambassadors or F affiliates? Um, you yeah. might consider things like audience, et cetera. So the ones that came up, relevance, that's obvious. Like, and a good way to think about this is domain. And we used to talk a lot about this in sales is like, okay, like, are, are, do you sell into the same category? Mm -hmm. Cool. ICP is a line. Great. Tell me about your bio, your sales process. Who are the per, the customer profiles involved in that? Because a lot of times you'll miss because you're like, oh, you sell to tech companies too. Great. Let's partner. And it's like, oh shit, I sell to marketing and you sell to HR. And this is a huge waste of our time. 
So you got to get yeah, just some different sure. pinpoints. <laughs> and it's like you find your audience is the bottom line, and make sure that you're yeah. you're talking to the same people. Um, and, and then adjusting you think about the same this. pain points for those same people, because <laughs> right. you could be adjusting different things for the same people. Totally, totally. And then you get an audience size, and then you think about the actual engagement of their audience. Um, and th these are all you guess it funnel right into kind of affiliate interview conversations. But it's like okay, yeah. we're, our audience is totally aligned. Your audience is huge as shit. Uh, people are, you know, you get this much and for, in terms of engagement, you can look at visitors, you can look at time on their website. Um, you can get data from them in terms of email open rates, if it's a newsletter, but these mm -hmm. are all details that you want to look at. And this is more engagement of their audience period, less so much leaning into comparable affiliate relationships that they have and how those have performed. Once you get over into that side of the conversation, it's like, how many, how much traffic have you driven for your partners? What kind of conversions has that resulted? And, and ultimately how much revenue has that generated? Those are all over here. And like, are you a good ambassador partner? But before you even get there, or sorry, affiliate partner, before you even get there, you gotta be like, yo, is your audience dope? Is it the same as ours? And did they love yep. you and trust you, right? It's kind of like the headline there. Um, and then promotional methods is another one that's really important. It's like, hey, how do you actually promote the affiliates? Do you have like a software vendors roundup and each person gets their own page? Do you ask them to do guest blog posts for you? So it's kind of a content driven promotion, et cetera. Cause obviously that feeds right into affiliate enablement, which is going to be a different flavor. And ideally because you've done the ambassador enablement already, you just kind of fine tune and massage that stuff. But the foundational kind of heavy lifting is done. Um, and then obviously you get into past performance. So for here too, and I, I didn't touch on this much. Well, I guess I'll pause there. Anything to add in terms of vetting affiliates, prioritizing affiliates? So <clears throat> what I wanted to touch on or kind of dive into was, you know, uh, best practices into how you go about or how you can go about getting this information from people. So for example, if you're a business that may be not as viral as some other companies, you may have to schedule some time to actually sit down and have Zoom calls with these individuals. If you're, let's say like a, um, an Apple and you know everyone wants to be an Apple ambassador, in that scenario, you might actually have a form fill. So someone has to go through a few rounds of interviews or something or form fills before like the first form, we're gonna quantifiably like grade that with a bot. And then if you get past a certain grade, then someone reaches out, something like that. So I'm just, what I wanted to do was talk through how would a company at various growth stages go about implementing a plan like this most efficiently um that's that's really it so yeah <laughs> yeah 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 so i guess and i'll just spit back that question to make sure that i'm clear is this like mm -hmm. like where do you start with even finding interesting affiliates yeah and then how you vet them yeah how do you find yeah, them how yeah. do you vet them yeah. <laughs> so um i think th this is a working through your customers is obviously an interesting way to do it so you can send out a quick survey and it's like yo where do you get your information what digital networks do you participate in? Facebook groups, Reddit forums, Discord channels, whatever. Like what? where is kind of the center of gravity for you where you get your dope shit, right? And for us, it would be like, oh, I read this every week and that every week. And I go to these things on a quarterly basis. And yep. I also follow this, this gal who's sharp as shit on these topics and this dude who writes about this stuff. It's like, okay, thanks. And then obviously you cross-reference all those responses and you're like, seems like 80% of our people f subscribe to this and 40% of them attend this event. And that'll kind of give you the usual suspects to start from. That obviously takes a little bit of time. So you can try to cheat code yep. that. And it's like best, best blogs for blank, <laughs> right? Or best, uh, you know, masterclass programs for blank. Um, yep. And you can just run well, SEM rush. RF yeah, could help with that too. Exactly, exactly. And then once and then once you have those websites, then you go into Hrefs or any of the other tools, and then you get a look at traffic. And it's like, mm -hmm. okay, what's their domain authority? What does traffic look like? Um, et cetera. And then you can start to see who's a heavy hitter and who's not. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. Uh, we inherited some affiliate uh, relationships that just need to be kind of brightened up. So obviously you want to challenge those assumptions that those yep. are the affiliates we should prioritize but we were fortunate enough to kind of have a, a foundation there or some momentum to build on. So then it's mostly about just refreshing the program. And then it becomes about like affiliate optimization, which is kind of where we're at. It's less so for us, like sourcing brand new affiliates. And it's like, yo, our page on your website is old and needs love. Here's new stuff. Here's some articles mm -hmm. we wrote about all this that is going to be super interesting for your people. Feel free to link to them. Happy days. Cause then that serves the backlink, which helps SEO, et cetera. Um, so that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, but 
I think it's SEM rush hrefs uh, and you can just go in and it's like, yo, I just want to know like the highest traffic websites for this industry and then yep. get more and then kind of fine tune it from there. And it's like, okay, this industry focused on workflows and automation. Cool. Got it. And then you can start there. Fantastic. Follow up question. We talk Maybe. about looking at their past performance. Now you've, you found them, you've vetted them. They're part of your program. They've had phenomenal past performance with another vendor. You're reporting on their performance with you. Three months have gone by. Nothing's happened. What do we do now? Do we set a quota? Do we have a conversation? What do you do with your affiliates that are not performing? Yeah, it's a great question. And I think because the, the, the pitfall is the exact same or the one that we addressed at the top of the call where it's like, I'm going to, I just lit up 10 affiliates and it's like, okay. And in those situations, like their machine is built to, to generate exposure. So it's, I think it's a little bit more okay to try and light up a bunch of affiliates, I think. But the pitfall with partners generally, if we abstract you know, out of that, is again, to try and boil the ocean. And then you out of sight, out of mind, you don't really get any traction with a single partner. And you're kind of just like, hey, I've gotten, it's like, oh, but I, I, these people all said they want to partner with me. And you're satisfied with that. And it's like, dude, that's a leading, that doesn't mean anything. Like the, you need right. to get to referrals and ultimately to revenue. So that's the measure, right? You want to get to the lagging indicators. So I think for an affiliate, it's like, setting realistic goals with them out of the gate mm -hmm. and then letting that be the proxy. So it's like, Hey, we're both on the same page about the potential of this relationship. And this is yep. what we're expecting. And then you structure a regular check-in to as a feedback loop, right? Hey, we're a month in, this is what we're seeing. Are either of us happy with this? Yes. Happy days. How do we pour more in? No. Yep. What are we missing on? How do we fine tune it? And I think you probably don't want to give an affiliate more than three months to see results. Um, because, and then in that situation, it's, it's not like, oh, like you just have to, you know, algorithms to live by, you have to have an optimal stopping point. So I think yep. that's part of the structure when you, when you initiate the relationship too. Cool. Hey, we're launching this thing. We're going to give it a dating phase <laughs> for three months. <laughs> these are, these are our goals. This is what the cadence is going to be like in terms of how we sync up and, and, you know, make sure that we're pacing towards our goals. Cool. And then ideally you get to the end of the three months and it's mutual. It's like, yo, this ain't yeah. working. And I'm not yeah. like, we're not going to be spending any more time on this. God bless. You know, have Absolutely. a nice day. So to summarize that, what we're hearing is from the beginning, once you go through that vetting conversation with the affiliate, you set clear expectations on how the relationship is going to grow over time. And then going back to the top where we talked about marketing communication as a key component, every time marketing checks in, hey, how's it going? How could we serve each other better? Is, is the messaging working? Are you getting objections to people signing up? Let's have that conversation when marketing reaches out. Totally. And the affiliates are also just an extraordinary wealth of information. Like, mm -hmm. hey, what are you seeing from the market? You're close yep. as shit to these personas and to these customer profiles as well. Oh, you think it's trending in this direction? Interesting. We might think about that on our product roadmap. Interesting. Yep. That could be a cool campaign for the fall. You know, yada, yada. So that's all. And again, that kind of collaboration too is not doesn't hit the top line or the bottom line. But it's useful, you know, and that type of input you can get a lot of flex from. And then that's a, something that's easy to exchange, right? It's exactly. like, you know, let's, let's swap notes. Hey, here's my insight. Here's your insight. Happy days. We both leave this conversation for the wiser. Exactly. That, that, that type of activity is still useful because to drive true outcomes for the business, you still need some activity outcomes, meaning you have to engage who is already aware and supporting your product and service. So for these affiliates, you wouldn't have to wait three months to see how they're performing if you're just regularly communicating with them already on a monthly basis. Totally. And I think there's a good way too, in terms of growth hacking, where you can think about the respective audiences. And uh, the only reason I bring this up is because you can kind of think about it as like a shot in the arm or a lifeline. Um, mm -hmm. Or you think about it as like making a splash when you first team up, but it's like, yo, let's host, let's co-host a workshop on this and let's bring in some ninjas from your side and some ninjas from our side to talk about the cool shit that they're doing and let's drive a ton of traffic towards it. Yeah. Cool. And that kind of de-risks the, the idea that you might fall to the wayside as just another affiliate that's associated with the brand, yada, yada. Uh, but it could also be like, yo, we tried the stuff that doesn't require a ton of effort. We, we're a month in. It's like, eh, let's, let's co-brand some shit. Like let's co-brand yeah. a white paper, let's co-brand an event and let's try to, because then all of a sudden there's a likelihood of exponential network growth where instead exactly. of, right, where you take, hey, you have 50,000 people that check out your stuff. We've got a thousand users. Let's smush them together and, uh, and see what happens.
I mean, and you can see that strategy doing numbers today. Look at Instagram with the collaboration post where both accounts get uh, tagged on the post. Look at YouTube. All of the platforms are starting to come out with, hey, do you want to collaborate, co-market and co-monetize? Let's make it easy for you. So yeah, I, I think that's a beautiful idea. Love it. Love it. Well, all right, my G, I think that's, uh, I think that's a wrap for this. this that's a wrap. Cut. Anything to add in closing? No, I, I just wanted to get those last two points out because if we're talking or if we're thinking about the natural traje trajectory of the conversation, people would get to the end and they're like, hey, how do we find and vet these people? And then how do we set clear expectations? And if they don't perform, what do we do? So I'm glad we got a chance to really touch on those points. I think a lot of the information provided here, it's there's more than enough things that people can act on the moment they watch this video. So I'm excited to get this out into the wild and see what kind of feedback we get. No doubt. Likewise. All right, my friend, uh, the next time I hear from you better be a, a pick from the beach. Look, she's in ear to ear. <laughs> with, uh, uh, with the margarita in one hand. <laughs> yeah, like, hey, how's that email inbox, player? Check you later. <laughs> uh, inbox zero before we hit the sand. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right, my man, we'll have an outstanding rest of the day. Good weekend. Enjoy the vacay. Psyched to see you when you're back. Bushy-eyed and bright-tailed. Yes, and I hope you feel better. I hope you get the garage situation figured out, dude. I'm just so excited to hop on the next session for this teardown with you. So let's get it, baby. No doubt. All right, cheers. Love of the game. <laughs>